Good evening, r 2 Welcome to our third Common Ground of the semester. At this time, we're going to go into a time of musical worship. And I know that it can feel really weird singing in front of a computer or phone screen, but I encourage you to take this opportunity to bring honest and genuine worship to God and know that you have brothers and sisters that are worshiping right now with you. Even though sometimes it feels like it, you are not alone. So let's take this time to worship our God together.
What's up, R28? Um, we're so glad that you're able to join us tonight. Um, my name is Harry, and I am the assistant college director here for our Route 20 College Ministry, and we're just so glad you're able to join. You know, can we spend some time on the right side of the screen? There's a chat uh, where we can just say hi to one another. Um, please, you know, when you log into the chat, uh, write down your name so that we know who's messaging and who's saying what. Uh, so yeah, let's take about 30 seconds just to say hi. You know, say hi to the staffer, say hi to one another, say hi to each other, uh, and yeah, we'll begin from there. So 
Take some time to say hi at this time. Hello, 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 hello. I, I can't see any of the chat. I wish I saw some chats so I could give you a, a live shout out. Um, but yeah, hey, we're so glad you're able to join us. Uh, if this is your first time here uh, in our video or our online live worship, I just want to welcome you. I really wish I could, you know, be able to see you and say hi and, you know, just be able to have a conversation with you. Um, but if you are new and you are looking for a church, and if you're looking for a ministry and you want to get plugged into our college ministry, please, on the chat right now, if you could just, you know, say hi, like, I want to get connected, and one of our student leaders or our staff members will be there to reach out to you and have a conversation with you. So please write down your name, your information, so that we can connect with you. Um, but for those who've been here for several months and, you know, maybe several years, I personally want to say, you know, I miss you guys. Uh, I really miss, you know, making fun of each other. I miss, you know, even the small things like being able to eat together, walk, you know, to service and walk to our room to have after hours together. You know, I miss all those things. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, a, to that day where we will meet again in person, where we will have common ground uh, together as a whole, uh, where, you know, hopefully there is no mask, where we can just, you know, eat freely together. So I'm looking forward to that day. But until that day comes, please continue to stay safe and continue to remain healthy. And if you ever need anything, like you need a prayer request or, you know, you just want to talk, please feel free to reach out to me or any of our staffers so that we can, you know, help you out during this time. Um, but, you know, if this is new, we, if, you, if you're new here, uh, we've been in a series called Inside Out. And for the past two weeks, Pastor James, our college pastor, has come up here and shared about anxiety and anger. And tonight, I have the opportunity to be able to talk about our third topic, which is loneliness. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know um, why I got this topic uh, or how it came, this topic came to me. I guess Pastor James thought that I was a, I look like a lonely dude, so I guess uh, I got this topic. But no, you know, I'm excited to be able to share about this because this is a topic that's very near and dear to my, uh, my heart. So yeah, we'll be talking about loneliness tonight, but if you guys have your Bibles, if you guys can turn with me to Psalm chapter 23. Psalm chapter 23, um, but if you don't have a Bible if, in front of you, you can also look at the screen at this time. Um, let's read the word of God together. So here is the reading of God's word, Psalm chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You're, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can you join me in prayer? Let's pray. Father, um, I just want to thank you so much for tonight and even for um, technology where we can gather together like this uh, online, although not physically, but online together to be able to hear your word and be able to worship together. God, remind us, I know all of us here crave to be with each other physically, to be able to worship with each other physically, but Lord, it is not our physical bodies that connect us, God, but Lord, it is Jesus, our leader, our teacher, our master, our savior, who ties us because of the uh, very work that he did on the cross for us. So spirits, may you move powerfully tonight. May, may you speak powerfully through me so that we can learn and taste just how great and amazing you are. So we thank you so much for this time, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, um, as I was prepping for tonight's teaching, it's been a while, by the way. Um, so if you guys don't know who I am, uh, I'm a high school math teacher. And actually, well, my school, my high school, um, just opened up this week for in-class teaching. 
So on Thursday, yesterday, it was when I saw my students for the first time, and we're like doing a hybrid model where we see half the people. So right now, it's super weird. Like, I feel like I'm a pro at this now, like being able to like be on screen looking at you. Um, but it's super weird now that I have to teach in front of live audience people. And, you know, as I was prepping for this message, the one thing that I kind of like start, start to think about is, you know, what is something that I did in college or what is some of the conversations that I had in college that I remember the most? Or better yet, the better question was, what are some conversations or what topics did I really enjoy talking about with my friends? You know, my friends and I, we love talking about our careers. You know, currently, like, my friends and I, we love talking about, like, theology, about, you know, the Bible. We talk about, you know, school, our work, and all these other things. But the one topic that I think and I believe that we all enjoy, that we all love doing and talking about where we invest our emotions, we invest our time, like, all of a sudden we're wide awake to have a conversation about this, that that topic, I believe, is the topic on relationship, right? Like, when I was in college, that's all, that's all we talked about, relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, who do you like, who do you like? And we would try to match each other, and that's all we talked about. And for those of you who are freshmen, let's be honest, I'm a high school math teacher, I know what high school students talk about. They love talking about relationships. All they talk to me about is, oh, can you set me up with this guy or this girl in class? Like, this is what, they, this is what we long to talk um, for. And the question that kept coming up to my mind is, like, why do we love talking about relationships so much? And, you know, I don't believe it's just relationships about the, uh, another person or another gender. I believe we love talking about not only our families, but most importantly about our friends and what's going on in their lives and um, just so forth. Anything about relationships. And I realized the reason why we love talking about relationships is because, let's think about this. When, when you talk to someone, just the initial talking and communicating to someone just naturally brings you together already. The reason why we love talking about relationships, like the reason why we ask about, hey, how's your relationship with this person? Uh, who do you like? All these things is because relationships brings us closer together. We feel a sense of connectedness. And, you know, like, uh, recently, one of the college students, like, I'm not going to name names or mention anyone, but they were talking about, like, the possibility of going on a date, right? And they were talking about this, and I kid you not, everyone just started coming in and talking about that person. Like, oh, like, who is it, who is it? And so many people were invested in that, that conversation that we all felt a sense of connection. I was in the back, like I was like telling myself, oh, I'm not going to get involved in this. But all I, my, my heart was just gravitating towards that conversation. And I just wanted to jump in because I wanted to feel a sense of connection with everyone in that room. So what is that topic? Relationships. But, you know, here's the thing. Like, um, one thing that I've noticed especially during this time of COVID season, is that a lot of these connections that we once had, a lot of these conversations that we once had, let's be real, it's gotten taken away from us. Since uh, March, I believe March was the day when we had the hard shutdown. We, we were literally eating and meeting together, worshiping together. We were talking about different things. We felt connected, but the week after when we shut down, it was immediately taken away from us. We felt a loss of connection. We lost relationships. We lost that ability to even meet with one another. And the reality is, as things get slowly taken away from us, especially with our social interactions with people, we start to become sad. We start to become depressed. And what does that lead to? That leads to loneliness. You know, one of the things that um, I dreaded as a college student was I dreaded um, the day of graduation. Not as a senior. As a senior, I was like, dude, like, I'm ready to graduate. I'm done. But the time when I was a freshman, the time when I was a sophomore, the time when I was a junior, I dreaded graduation the most because, here's the thing, because the older class was about to leave that school. And why was I dreading that moment so much? It's because the relationships that I've built, I knew that it was slowly 
coming to an end, not a complete end, but that time of interaction, of that connectedness was going to be limited because they were going to move on into their next chapter in life. And you know, for all of us in here, I'm pretty sure in this season, we all felt a sense of loneliness. You know, loneliness is such a big word that I think all of us can relate to. Either we know people who are feeling lonely, or I think which most of us agree with is that we've either dealt with loneliness or we are currently dealing with loneliness ourselves. And you know, um, I dreaded that moment and um, the, the, the stupid thing that I did to myself, and I would feed myself these lies. Like, I would tell myself these things. I don't know if, it's, if you do the same thing. But when I feel like there's a mo- like, if I feel like there's something missing in myself or missing in my life, I always tell myself, you know, maybe having this thing will actually fill that void. Like, maybe having this will help me not to be lonely. Maybe having someone in my life will make me feel less lonely. So, like, buying a new car or having this type of career will, let, will make me feel less lonely. Or maybe having a relationship, maybe having this girlfriend or that boyfriend will help me in my loneliness. You know, just being very transparent and honest with everyone who's watching. And don't worry, I got permission to say this. I'm currently in a relationship myself, in a dating relationship. And, you know, I thought, going into this relationship, I thought, oh, you know what? Having someone next to me, having someone with me, being in a relationship will fill this void of loneliness. Like, it will help me with my life, it will definitely, I won't even think about being lonely anymore because I have someone there. You know, the, when we started dating, like, it was like a honeymoon phase. Like, oh, my gosh, like, oh, there's, she's next to me. Like, I don't feel lonely. Like, all, like, during that time, all my friends were dating, so I was like, dang, I'm so lonely. So having a girlfriend would be awesome. And then, boom, she comes into my life, and everything is fine. And then after a period of time, the sense of loneliness started creeping in. It's not that she's not there to support me. She's constantly there to support me, and she's been doing an amazing job supporting me and finding ways to better support me in the things that I do. But this, the sense of loneliness kept coming in, even though she was doing her best to support me. And vice versa, she would say the same thing. You can ask her too. She would say the same thing that, yeah, we had a honeymoon phase where it's like, oh, everything's so awesome, everything is great, but I try my best to support her, I try my best to do these things, but she can also admit to the fact that she feels lonely at times. You know, oftentimes we associate loneliness to relationships. But you know, have you ever, you know, woken up one day when, you know, like, everything's fine and you still feel a sense of void like in your life where you feel like there's still something missing, yet everything around you is fine. Like some of us are feeling and experiencing loneliness because we don't have these things, but a a handful of us, we have things around us and we know that there are people around us that support us, but yet we still feel lonely and the question is why? Why do we still feel lonely? You know, the problem is this. The reality is that we still will always feel lonely even if we have all these things. We often assume that loneliness is created by things around us. We often look at other people and say, oh, if I only had that, I would feel less lonely. If I only was in this situation, I wouldn't feel lonely. So we often use our circumstances or things around us to associate with loneliness. But my point tonight is not that things around us makes us feel lonely or creates loneliness. But I believe that the Bible and what God has been teaching me is that it is our hearts that is missing something that's creating loneliness. That makes us feel lonely. It is not the outer circumstances, but it is our hearts That's something within that is portraying outwards. You know, loneliness is scary. It's a scary thing. Because when we continue to believe that we are lonely from the outside in, there's two things that happens to us. There's loneliness tells us two different lies. Number one, it tells us that we are always alone. 
And secondly, it will tell us that there are better things and there are other things in life that can fill that emptiness in your heart other than God. So again, it will tell us that we are always alone. And secondly, it will tell us that there are other things in life, there are things in life that can fill that emptiness, fill that loneliness other than God. You know, corona season, this season, exposed so many things of my heart. One of the things that it exposed in my heart is that I tend to suppress my loneliness. And how do I suppress my loneliness? I suppress it by finding other things around me to fill that void. What is that one big void that I've been filling my heart with? Social media. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, TikTok. Why do people love Instagram so much? People love Instagram because you constantly see each other's pictures and you feel connected with your friends, with your family members because they share pictures. But not only that, Instagram is amazing. Like, it, they're, they're genius before adding this. They added stories. You feel connected because you see what each person is doing in their daily life. I have a friend who literally posts a story every single hour. So I know exactly what they're doing every single day. We feel we love and we crave connection because look at our lives on Instagram. We not only want to be connected with other people, but we also want people to connect with us. We post stories. We post pictures. And let's be real. Let's be honest. Sometimes for me, I post stories because I want people to be connected with me. Because we feel an emptiness inside our hearts, it naturally comes out outwards in many different things. Facebook, do you guys know why Facebook was originally created? It was created so that we can connect with people from our past, from people around the world that we've became, like, had relationships with. And it's a, it's a bridge for us to get connected with one another. We all love and consume connectedness. We crave it. We crave it. And here's, you know, here's a confession that I have to make, guys. In this COVID season, there's two things that I've used to suppress my loneliness. The first thing is Call of Duty. Warzone. Activision, guys, amazing game. Beautiful game. Like, I talk to my boys all, every night. We talk, we feel like we're at war, we fight together, we die together, we ride together. I suppress my uh, emptiness with that. But the second thing that I uh, suppress my loneliness with, this is kind of like uh, super embarrassing, but um, I don't know, what, I don't want to say this, but Korean drama. <laughs> K-drama. I don't know what it is about K-drama, guys, but... Man, it is so addicting. You know, <laughs> this is how addicted I am. Like, I have a separate chat group with some people in our church, in R28, actually. There's staffers in, you know who you are. We have a separate group chat talking about Korean drama. You know, I realize I love Korean drama because it fills this void in my heart that I've always longed after. A certain type of relationship, a, a relationship that seems so good when things around them are collapsing. Like, for instance, like one of the dramas that I talked about was Crash Landing on You. Oh, my God, best Korean drama, I think. But, guys, don't, don't get addicted, okay? But everything is falling apart around them, and yet they're still able to find joy, find love, find peace in the midst of chaos. And... What, what happens in Korean drama? Usually at the end, it's like an eternal thing. Like forever, you're going to be in a tight-knit relationship. And that's something that my heart craves after. So because my heart craves it, I can't help but to indulge in Korean drama. I can't help but to indulge in Instagram, in Facebook, in Snapchat, in TikTok. I don't have a TikTok, by the way. But in other things of this world that fills this emptiness in my heart. But you know, the problem, the problem is that we are consuming so many things that this world has to offer. 
we are consuming so many of these things that, number one, we forget why we were created. We forget who is there with us. We forget the simple truth. And secondly, we suppress our loneliness and we act like it's not there anymore. But the reason why this season of social unrest and this health pandemic, the reason why I exposed my heart so much is because everything got taken away from me like that. Everything got taken away from me like that, and as soon as we hit that time where we had to social distance and where we had to do our lockdown, all of my loneliness came out. It just, the cap went off and then boom, it just exploded. My question to all of us is this, have we been suppressing our loneliness so much that we don't know exactly what to do anymore? You know, there was a recent test, a recent um, study that was done. This, te- this study has shown that there is a huge increase, an exponential increase of people that are experiencing lon- loneliness right now. And because there's an exponential increase of loneliness, there's an exponential increase of suicides. As soon as corona hit, people got everything taken away from them. And because everything was taken away from them, they experience loneliness. And as a result, they lose a sense of hope. And what does that lead to? To many people, unfortunately, suicide, taking their own life. You know, more than just this coronavirus, this corona season, it actually exposed something else within my heart as I was preparing and as I was meditating and reflecting on my own heart. You know, I realized that corona just didn't expose the empty void in my heart during the season. But it also exposed that I was no different before COVID. That I would suppress my loneliness with, you know what, with my busyness. I was so busy that I didn't even have time to think about my loneliness. I was so busy with doing service, I was so so busy doing work in even the good things like serving at church and doing all these things that I would suppress and act like loneliness wasn't a part of my life. But if we truly examined our hearts, if we truly examined ourselves, we should all come to acknowledge that we are missing something. And the question for all of us tonight is, what are we filling that missing void, that peace with? Some of us in here, we're experiencing loneliness right now. Some of us in here know of people who are experiencing loneliness. Some of us in here don't even know where to start. Let me give us four things that we can do to start fighting our loneliness. The first thing is this, and there's four R's that I want us to recognize. The first R is recognize. Recognize what? Recognize that we are missing something internally. You know, to true recovery, and I've talked, I have a lot of friends in, uh, who are MFTs and who are psychologists and therapists, they say this, the, the, true, the, the correct road to recovery is not trying to um, go around the problem, but rather figuring out what the problem is and tackling that issue. We need to recognize that we are missing something within our hearts. That's step one. We need to recognize our own hearts. Because a lot of us, and even including myself, what we like to do is we like to go around our problem and mask that problem with social media, with things that we enjoy, and we go around it and we completely ignore that there is a problem in our hearts. We need to recognize that we have a problem. Second thing is this. We got to remember the truth. 
remember the truth. You know, the reason why I mentioned Psalms, Psalm chapter 23, the reason why I, I love um, just David in general and just the way he writes is because, um, you know, if you read, um, if you read this, the, the crazy thing is that he's constantly, like, he's expressing his anger, his frustration, his worries, He's crying out to God, saying, God, where are you during this time of tribulation, during this time when everyone seems like they're against me? Where are you, God? Like, God, help me, please. And I think some of us are in that position where we're saying, God, where are you? God, where are you during this corona season? And this is David. He's saying, where are you? But you know the beautiful thing about this is that David never fails to remember the truth. He never fails to go back after he calls out and cries out to God and says things like this, like, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still waters. Because he remembered who the true God was, he was able to say things like, he makes me lie down in green pastures where he leads me beside still waters. But everything around him was chaotic. Right now for us, some of us, around us, the waters next to us, it's flooding, it's crazy. And he even goes further to say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The truth that David remembers, the truth about the psalm, what what it says is, that God is always there with him. He reminds himself of this truth even though he's going through so much during his time. So what's the second thing that we need to do? We need to remember the truth that God is with us. You know the Bible, if I could summarize it in three words from beginning to end, it's simply God with us. And because we suppress our emotions, suppress our loneliness with so many different things and we tend to forget these things, We think that these are actually better than God himself. But God, what God is trying to point to us tonight is that God is with us. That is the simple truth that we often neglect and forget. So second, remember the truth. The third thing is remember the cross. Remember the cross. Why is the cross so significant? Why is the cross so important in our lives? You know, when you see Jesus... I want you to really ask yourself, how do you view Jesus? Because most often Christians will view Jesus as this high king, this high priest, our savior, the savior of the world, the king of the world. We will view him to be someone so strong, someone so mighty, and I think, and we should. But do you ever see the other side? The things that Jesus had to endure for us? I believe that there was someone even lonelier than us. That someone went through an even lonelier situation than we can ever go through. It was Jesus himself. And why do I say this? It's because of this. Jesus, when he began his ministry, he went to his disciples and brought them aboard. You know what the disciples said to Jesus? The disciples said, Jesus, I will follow you to the very end. Like, I will die for your namesake. Jesus, I will never deny you. I will never deny you. How can I ever deny you? You are the king. Like, I am, like I'm going to follow after you. Like, Lord, if Jesus, can I please sit on your right and your left? Like, I want to be with you. Like, I will commit to you. And look, the disciples said these things not out of, um, you know, they didn't know, but they were saying this because they really wanted to show their utter commitment to Christ. But on the day of his death, when he was captured by the Roman guards, do you know who was with them? Do you know who Jesus had next to him? The disciples fled the scene. They fled as soon as he got captured. Do you know who betrayed Jesus? One of Jesus' disciples who followed him throughout his ministry. 
Do you know who denied Jesus? One of his disciples, fearful for his life, when he was the one who said that he would never deny him and that he would die for Jesus. Jesus' closest people, his closest friends, betrayed him, turned their back against him, and left him to die on the cross by himself. Imagine the, the, the pain that Jesus had to endure just from that. The immense feeling of loneliness, knowing that people that he trusted the most immediately left him. But I don't think that's why Jesus is the loneliest person. The reason why I feel like Jesus and believe that Jesus was the loneliest person on this earth was because when he was on the cross, when he died on the cross for you and me, this was the first time ever where Jesus' and God the Father's relationship was severed. Jesus and God and the Spirit had perfect unity, perfect relationship with one another. And on that day, Jesus cries out to God, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? On that day, Jesus' relation with God was severed. The perfect relation was severed. It was Jesus himself on the cross, dead, hanging for you and me. Why do I say this? I say this because Jesus was rejected so that you and I could be accepted. Jesus became lonely so that you and I don't ever have to be lonely anymore. He filled that empty void in our hearts by dying on the cross and resurrecting from the grave so that you and I can have an eternal relationship with our God, our Father. That is why we need to remember the cross, because he died so that you and I can be freed from sin, so that we can be with God once again. Isn't that so amazing and isn't that so beautiful? You and I deserve, we did absolutely nothing to deserve this. But because of God's grace, because of God's great love for us, he showed and proved to us on that day that he would send Jesus to die upon the cross for you and me so that he can be rejected, so that you and I can be accepted, so that we don't have to experience his wrath, but that Christ can endure the full wrath of God that we deserved. That's why we need to remember the cross. And the last point is this, we need to renew our hearts every single day with the truth, the gospel message. We need to place our identity in Christ. Guys, knowing that we are broken, knowing that there's one truth that God is with us, knowing that Christ suffered for us, we can only place our identity and our hope in our God, in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, everything in this world is going to fade away one day. Even your closest friends, even your significant other, even your spouse in the future will fade away one day. But the only person that will ever remain forever more and that will be there for you eternally is God our Father. He will always be with us. And he promised David this, and he David can now say that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the truth that we live with. This is the truth that God is sharing with us tonight. You know, our I'll end with this. You know, we always ask this question, God, where are you? Like, I ask that, I ask that question all the time. God, where the heck are you? God, so many people are dying. Where are you? But here's the reality. God has always been there with us. God is standing there, right there, right next to you. He is with you in the form of his spirit. He is there with us. All God is saying, hey, turn to me. Turn to me and I will give you rest. Let me end with this passage here. It says in Romans 8, verse 37 to 39, 
No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, not things pre- nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our to wait, let us turn away from these earthly things and let us place our hope and our identity in Christ. For he is the only one who can fill our empty hearts, fill our loneliness, and remind us that he is with us and we have him forever. Won't you join me in prayer? Hello, for our first prayer topic, uh, we will just be taking the time to thank God for what he has endured on the cross uh, in order for us to not be so alone. Um, Because of him, we are never spiritually alone. Uh, Even though we might feel that we are physically alone, um, we can always depend on God that he will never leave us spiritually. Uh, So let us just take this time to thank God uh, for this promise and truth. What's up, R28? My name is Micah. I'm going to be leading us into our second prayer request. Um, so there may be times where we may still feel alone despite knowing that um, God sent Christ to die for us. And um, I know that's something that I struggle with sometimes. So um, as we prepare for our next set of prayer, um, I want you guys to um, just pray for your brothers and sisters who might be feeling alone right now. Uh, maybe send them a message of encouragement after we pray, but uh, let's take this time to just pray for our brothers and sisters right now. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for tonight. And God, all of us who are streaming online right now, we can all admit that, God, that there is something missing in our hearts. For God, we constantly crave after things of this world, and we We crave these things because nothing in this world really satisfies our heart. Father, as you have reminded us tonight, everything in this world will fade away one day. But God, your love will always remain. So Father, I pray for all my brothers and sisters who are watching here tonight, that God, that we wouldn't place our hope and our identity in the things of this world that will fade away one day but Lord, that we would place our identity in someone that is eternal. Someone who gave himself for us. Someone who was rejected so that we can all be accepted. May we place our hope and our identity in Christ. Jesus, our Lord, our King, our Savior. Father, we did absolutely nothing to receive this. But God, you knew that we would always crave for connection. God, remind us of this simple truth that you are with us, that you are for us, that nothing can separate us from your love for because of the very work that Christ did on the cross for us. 
Father, as we go about our days, especially in this season of loneliness, may we not only be, uh, may, we, uh, may you help us to tackle loneliness not only in our personal lives, but may you use us at, as lights and sauce of, these, of, the, of this earth to go and proclaim that there is a hope, that there is someone that we can find our identity in that is eternal. So God, may you convict our hearts daily. May the gospel message continue to renew our hearts each and every single day. We thank you for the very work that you have done. We thank you for the very work that you're doing right now and the work that you will continue to do in our lives. We thank you for your grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
brought me to the fold of God. Amen. Praise Jesus. Thank you so much to our praise team and uh, as always, thank you to our streaming team. Uh, I want to recognize Harry. Uh, it was so good to um, being taught by you once again. It reminds me of uh, only six months ago, actually, when I joined this ministry. Um, and it's so much has happened since then, but I, I really felt blessed by you tonight. Um, thank you so much for bringing the word of God uh, to us. And I'm sure that all of God's people were really blessed by the word that you gave. So thank you. Um, I'm here to give you a few announcements, R28. Uh, first announcement, it's the Blessing Challenge. Tonight is the last night that you can submit your group photo. It could be a boomerang. It could be a photo. Uh, creativity is important. Participation is important. So please take a group picture of your cell group, blessing one another somehow, whether it's online or like on the street meetup. Don't do anything crazy that I wouldn't do, but we've had some creative entries so far. So thank you to the groups that have already submitted it. But tonight is the deadline. And then next week, we are going to announce two winning groups. And those winning groups will be rewarded with Boba. So please do participate. Next announcement is that we are open for our Sundays. So every Sunday, we do have an outdoor worship service at Living Hope Patio. Registration is required, so please go to our church website and then register and come out. We do keep you pretty safe, um, but it would be really nice for me to get to see you in person. This by no means, um, I don't want you to feel unsafe. So if you don't feel right about coming out, please don't come out. Please stay and worship online. But if you are willing, uh, then please do come and say hello. We have a college table set up in the back. Um, I do have some ice cream or some other snacks for you so that you can come, hang out, we can chat a little bit, uh, be safe, and then you can go home. So please do consider coming. Third announcement is that we have our podcast ongoing, thanks to Laura and Hannah. Shout out to you guys. Uh, it's called Commissioned. It's a podcast for Christian collegians just like you guys. We are mainly interested in benefiting you, R28, and serving you. But if your friends want to listen to it and benefit from it, they're more than welcome to, so please share with them. Um, episode two is about to drop very soon, and so you'll hear about it on our social media. And lastly, I'm very excited for this one. Michael, our teaching coordinator, is going to come and uh, teach us about apathy. This is a relevant topic, just like it was for tonight uh, in loneliness. So please tune in next Friday with the subject of apathy. Now let me pray uh, to close us in our worship service. Let's pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God our Father and the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit who fills our hearts, who's the only one that can fill our hearts against all the emptiness and the loneliness that we experience. Be with us and guide us forever and evermore. And all God's people said, amen. Be blessed in Christ, our two eight. Thank you.